So today we're going to be continuing this idea of those triangle congruencies. Side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, and hypotenuse leg. And we're going to use them to actually do a proof. So looking at our first proof, we have a given statement of W is the midpoint of ZY. And we have a given statement of CW is congruent to XW. So let's write down our first given statement. W is the midpoint of ZY. Reason is given. Now, just like with other proofs, Let's look at that given statement and see if there's a vocab word, which there is. The vocab word is midpoint, so I know my next reason has to be the definition of midpoint. Well, then midpoint splits something in half. So it says W is splitting VY in half. So our two halves would be VW is congruent to YW. Now with triangle congruencies, I do recommend marking up your diagram with the types of congruencies as soon as you have a statement. Doing so helps identify what type of triangle congruency we will have. So we have a congruency statement. We need three statements. Or side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, 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 side, all four of those three congruencies. And even for hypotenuse leg, we had right, right angles, which are congruent, the hypotenuse and the leg. So once again, three congruencies. So no matter what we need three, we have one right now. So let's write our next given. So ZW is congruent to x w. So I'll mark that on the diagram. We already have single tick marks, so let's do double. Well, we have two congruency statements. We need three, but we're out of givens. So if this is the case, there is a list of triangle look-fors that I have that I recommend looking at. Our first triangle look-for is this question of, does it look like a bow tie? If it does look like a bow tie, what that means is we have vertical angles. If it isn't doesn't look like a bow tie, we move on to the second question. Second question is, do they share a side? If the answer is, yeah, they do share a side, that is our reflexive property of congruence. And then our third question is, did you say parallel? So did one of the given statements say parallel? If you said yes, more than likely, we are dealing with alternate interior angles. So let's pop back over to that proof. First question. Does it look like a bow tie? Well, in this case, it does. So I know my fourth reason is going to be vertical angles. So the vertical angles are the center of the bow tie. So I can say angle V, W, Z. Is congruent to Y, W, X. So 
So we now set five triangle, uh, three con triangle congruencies. So we can say our prove statement. Proof statement says triangle VWZ is congruent to triangle YWX. But we need to figure out what type of triangle congruency this is. Looking at the problem, I see we have more sides marked congruent than angles. So that helps narrow it down to either side, 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 or side, angle, side. In this case, because we have an angle between our two sides, this would be side, angle, side. Let's look at proof number two. We have two given statements, so let's write down the first one. D is the midpoint. Of AC given. Well, we have a vocab word midpoint, so I know my next reason for me definition of midpoint. So midpoint once again splits something in half. So I know that A D is congruent with C D. I can write my next congruency statement then, or my next given of AB is congruent to CB. And since we said a congruency statement, I'm going to mark it. The sum with two marks. So we are out of given statements, so back to that triangle look for list. First question, does it look like a bow tie? Fortunately, it doesn't. So we move on to the second question. Second question, do they share a side? In this case, they do. BD is in both triangles, so I can say, because of the reflexive property of congruence, that BD is congruent to BD. Well, we have three triangle congruency statements. So I can say the triangles are congruent. So I can say triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. Now looking at the problem, the diagram has more sides marked congruent than angles. In fact, there are no angles marked congruent, so this has to be side, side, side. Moving on to proof number three. This time we have three statements. Now, unfortunately, the proof statement did not print with it. So we'll write that in. So prove triangle ABC is congruent to triangle e, EDC. So let's write down our first statement. C is the midpoint of BD. Well, we have a vocab word. The vocab word is midpoint. So I know my reason is going to be a definition of midpoint. It says C is putting BD in half. So my two halves are BC and DC.
Oh, I can write my next given then. It says AB is perpendicular to BD. Now, what does that mean? Well, definition of perpendicular, that is a vocab word. What perpendicular means, remember, two lines or line segments that make a right angle. So it says A, B, D, A, B, and D, B form a right angle. So I can say angle A, B, C is a right angle. Let's write our next given. So BD is perpendicular to segment DE. And this is very similar to the first one, or the second given that we had. So I can say our reason is definition of perpendicular. So I can say angle EDC is a right angle. Now we have two right angles, those two statements. So because we have right angles, we know right angles, no matter what, are 90 degrees. So I can say angle ABC is congruent to angle EDC because of right angle congruence. Well, I'll even mark those right angles in. So we have two congruency statements. We need three. Looking at our triangle look for list, first question, does it look like a bow tie? Which in this case it does. Vertical angles are in the middle, so our reason is vertical. So I can say angle BCA is congruent with angle DCE because of vertical angles. We now have our three triangle congruencies. So I can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. Now, looking at the diagram, we have more angles marked congruent. So that tells me it's either angle side angle or angle angle side. Well, remember the trick that we talked about last time. If we go from one angle that's marked congruent to the other angle marked congruent by dragging our writing utensil, we cross the side that is marked congruent. So this has to be angle side angle. Now for the next one, we're going to use the same given our same proof statement. So go ahead and take a moment, try and do proof number four. So our first given says C is the midpoint of AE. I know midpoint 
has to be our next reason. So midpoint, so C splits AE in half. So I can say AC is congruent with EC. So I'll mark it on our diagram. Next given statement, AB is perpendicular to BD. Given. Perpendicular is a vocab word, so that is our next reason, definition of perpendicular. So I know that perpendicular means they're making a right angle. So angle A, B, C is a right angle. We can write our next given statement. B, D is perpendicular to D, E. And we have another perpendicular bit. So I can say angle EDC is a right angle. Because that is our definition of perpendicular. Looking at our triangle look for list, it does look like a bow tie. So I can say angle BCA is congruent to angle DCE because those are vertical angles. Back, we can mark them. We have oh, Mr. Johnson actually forgot his stuff. We have two spots that say right angle. So I can say angle ABC is congruent to angle EDC. because of right angle congruency. Now we have our three congruency statements. We can say triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EDC. And though this one is so similar to the one before, if we go from one angle that's congruent to the other, we don't cross that side that's marked congruent. So this one has to be angle, angle, side. 